good afternoon students today in this lecture we are going to start a new topic of <coughs> working principles of langshear and locomotive boilers see this is a locomotive boiler which is in a cylindrical which is in the shape of a cylindrical shell and uh, it is in a horizontal position and we can observe the components of this langshear boiler here see pressure gauge water level gauge fire door fire box ash pit great blow of cork feed check valve manhole steam stop valve <coughs> chimney cylindrical shell these are the components of this locomotive boiler we can study these components in a detailed manner one by one see this is the front view of this locomotive boiler this is the front view of the locomotive boiler and this is the side view of the locomotive boiler and this is the top view of the locomotive boiler the elevation of this locomotive boiler we can see in the next diagram see here this locomotive boiler see the front view of this locomotive boiler is how we can observe two fire tubes here uh, the fire box is there and inside when we are going to observe from front view of the locomotive boiler we can observe a single fire tube but in the locomotive boiler we are having two fire tubes in the fire tubes the hot gases are going to pass see here the steam after converting the water in water what is the steam has been produced has been collected here this is the safety valve this is steam stop valve and chimney and uh, this is the we are having the two fire tubes here we can observe here see this is the front view when we are seeing from the front side we can observe this in this view and coming to here this is a side view when we are observing from the side part of the locomotive boiler we are going to observe the two cylindrical fire tube boxes here fire boxes in a cylindrical shape this is the steam which has been collected at the top part and this is the water which has been collected at the bottom this is what the grate uh, around the cylindrical shape at the bottom and this is the boiler shell this safety wall this boiler shell is placed uh, on a brick wall this is what about the side view which we can observe of the locomotive boiler this we are having here we are having some of the components of the locomotive boiler safety valve we are going to study these components in a detailed way here that what is meant by a safety valve how it works <coughs> in the locomotive boiler <coughs> See safety valve. It is used to blow off the steam when the pressure of the steam inside the boiler exceeds the working pressure. See, it is used to blow off the steam. Means uh, blow off means what are the sedimentations for? We are going to remove that excess uh, material or excess uh, flue gases. See how the safety valve is working here. It is used to blow off the steam when the pressure of the steam inside the boiler exceeds means when the pressure inside the boiler 
is going to be exceed means it is going to be more means it exceeds the working pressure means it is going to control here the safety valve see water level indicator it indicates the level of water in the boiler means it is going to maintain the water level in the boiler itself it is placed in front of the boiler two water level indicators are used in the boiler see here pressure gauge how we are going to here use here the pressure gauge means to indicate the pressure of the steam inside the boiler how much pressure is there inside the steam we are going to get the pressure value by using of this pressure gauge and coming to the steam stop valve it is the function to stop and allow the steam from the boiler to steam pipe means uh, what are the whatever the steam is required we are we can take from where the steam has been stored and the remaining can be stopped by using of the steam stop valve these are some of the components are mountings of the locomotive boiler which we are using for working of the locomotive boiler see here feed check valve it stops and allows the flow of water inside the boiler means uh, feed check valve is used to control the flow of water inside the boiler see coming to blow off valve it is function is to remove the sedimentation or mud periodically that is collected at the bottom of the boiler see here when the boiler is operating see in the water itself when the uh, when feed water has been heated some of the impurities has been formed and uh, it is going to collect at the bottom of the boiler here the mud or the impurities or the sedimentations which has been formed at the bottom of the boiler can be removed by using of this blow off valve see manhole is there one of the main component which we are using in this uh, locomotive boiler it is a hole provided on the boiler so that a man can easily enter inside the boiler for cleaning and repairing purpose means when it when the locomotive boiler has raises any problem by using of this manhole the man can enter inside the boiler for cleaning and for repairing purposes this is what uh, which uh, we know uh, about some of the mountings and uh, here in the locomotive boiler we are using a fusible plug it is used to extend the fire inside the boiler when the water level inside the boiler falls to an unsafe level and prevents an explosion it also prevents the damage that may happen due to explosion means in a boiler we are going to get a uh, high temperatures for controlling of these high temperatures which are developed in the boiler is used uh, this fusible plug the fusible plug is used to control the damage that is going to happen when heavy temperatures are there in the boiler <coughs> this is what about the fusible plug and we all know sir uh, that about the grate it is a platform that is used to burn solid fuel upon the grate we are going to do some combustion process there fire door is there which we are using in the locomotive boiler or in different types of boilers this by using of this fire door we are going to feed coal or fuel into our outside of the boiler <coughs> ash pit we have already studied in the previous boilers about simple vertical boiler as well as this coherent boiler in coherent boiler and a simple wall vertical boiler we have observed that how the ash pit works there here the ash pit is used to collect the ash of ash which has been produced after combustion has been completed upon the grate see these are uh, some of the mountings which we have studied up to now which we are what are the mountings we have used in the locomotive boiler and coming to the accessories here we are using here economizer air preheaters superheater and feed pump 
these are uh, the four types of accessories which we are using in the locomotive boiler see here the economizer is used as a heat exchanger in steam power plant it is used to preheat the fluid or water by taking the residual heat uh, from the combustion products that is from the flue gases it is just installed to increase the efficiency of the boiler in the power plant economizer is used as a heat exchanger in steam power plant that uh, it takes some of the amount from the flue gases uh, which has been raised and by using of this collected heat from the fuel gases it is used to increase the efficiency of the boiler in the power plant this is what about the economizer which we are using uh, at uh, the in front uh, see here it is just installed to increase the efficiency of the boiler in the power plant see here coming to air preheaters it is a mechanical device which abstracts the heat from the flue gases and transfers it to the air means uh, it is also the air preheater abstracts the heat from the flue gases it also collects the heat uh, from the flue gases and transfers it to the air in boilers the preheaters are installed in between the economizer and the chimney see here the economizer and air preheaters are going to collect the heat from the fuel gases and the economizer is used to increase the efficiency of the boiler as well as air preheaters are going to transfer this heat to the air in the boilers see next coming uh, accessory is nothing but of a super heater it is used in the super heating of steam produced in the boiler its main purpose is to increase the temperature of the saturated steam after the feed water has been heated or after the feed water has been converted into saturated steam it is going to by using of this super heater we are going to increase the temperature of the saturated steam without any change in the pressure is nothing but of a super heater and coming to the feed pump it is used to pump the water from storage to the boiler during the boiler operation means feed pump means which is used to feed water to the boiler these are some of the accessories which we are in which we are using in the locomotive boiler and we can observe here the elevation of the locomotive boiler how it is going to be see i have shown you the diagram of locomotive boiler how we are going to observe the front view the side view and the top view when we are going to observe from the front view we are going to see only one <coughs> fire tube from the front side from the front view but uh, inside uh, the shell inside the locomotive boiler we are having two fire tubes which we can visible only one fire tube when we are going to see from the front view and uh, when we are going to see from side view we are going to observe two fire tubes we can see the two fire tubes uh, from the side view and coming to the bottom tube we can observe both the fire tubes uh, from the top side this is what uh, which we are showing uh, the top view side view and front view elevations uh, in this diagram see this is the this is the front view which we are showing here when we are going to observe from the front we are going to get only we are going to observe only a single fire tube here and uh, this is the side view we can observe two fire tubes here this is the boiler drum or it is it is nothing but of a shell inside the shell we are having two fire tubes see here this is the steam space where we are going to collect the steam this is the steam stop valve and this is the safety valve and this is the furnace door 
this is the this is the place we are where we are going to collect the ash here it is nothing but of ash pit and this is nothing but of uh, the blow of cock blow of cock means nothing but of what are the impurities formed under the boiler can be removed by using of this blow of value and uh, coming to here we are having furnace grate furnace grate means upon the furnace grate we are going to do combustion process we are doing by using of the coal we are doing some combustion process this is the furnace door by using of this furnace door we are going to feed some um, solid fuel upon to the grate see here this is the fire tube this is the fire tube and uh, after combustion has been done what are the hot gases produced there from the combustion chamber is going to be moved in front of the locomotive boiler see here how it passes the hot gases is passing through the side and it enters the bottom central channel and uh, it is going to be when we are going to observe from the top view it is going to be entered here see this is the bottom central and these are the two top this is the bottom central and this is the side from the side channel if we are going to observe here the hot flue gas are going to pass here um from the top side and from the bottom side and from the from the bottom side it enters into the chimney and uh, it escapes into the atmosphere this is what about uh, the langshire boiler when the hot gases are passing through this fire tube the water is going to be circulated see here the dotted lines the water is going to be circulated around this fire tube around uh, this fire tube and uh, what are the when the hot when the water is going to be circulated around this fire tube due to the hot gases passing inside the fire tube the due to convection process the water uh, get heats up and uh, it is going to be converted into a steam and what is the steam has been produced it has been collected in the steam space and whenever it is required by using of the steam stock valve we are going to control the steam and we are using the steam here and uh, this is what which we knows that uh, how the sedimentations which has been formed in the combustion chambers has been collected here what is the ash which has been formed here is collected in the ash pits here rare exit pass this is what bottom central channel here this is what the side channel chimney rare exit passage see here this is the side channel to bottom central channel and side channel one here this is what the boiler drum which we can observe the elevation of the locomotive boiler here and this is what uh, we can observe the side view the front view here here we are having a water level indicator and we are having the gauge here here we are, can observe the steam stop valve here here we are having the safety valve here we are having the chimney this is the main mf means nothing but of main flow main flow see here we are having the grate here from the fire door we are going to feed coal upon to this grate after some combustion has been takes place what are the hot gases raised here the hot gases are passing through the main main flow and it enters into the bottom flow see here at the bottom we are going to at the bottom of the boiler what are the sedimentations has been collected is 
entered into the blow of clock see this is the front when we are going to observe the front view we are going to observe only a single fight tube how the hot gas are passing from main flow to the bottom flow see here from the bottom flow it enters uh, to the side flow see here we can observe here main flow these are the two fire tubes see here flow tubes see here this is the boiler shell bottom flow side flow side flow. this is the side flow here from the side flow the main flow gases here hot gases are going to be entered and from these to when we are going to observe from the side we are going to observe these uh, two flow tubes this is the two flow tubes the fire is going the hot gases are going to flow through these uh, side flows and uh, by using of this uh, side flow it is going to be entered into the atmosphere see what are the hot gases uh, which we are getting here by using of this damper it is going to be side and it is going to be see here it is going to be at atmosphere by using of the chimney this is the chimney this is the chimney and uh, the gases here is uh, raised or is going to be by using of this chimney it is entered into the atmosphere see some of the characteristics of this langshire boiler as nothing but of this langshire boiler is a horizontal tube boiler it is a stationary fire tube boiler means stationary means nothing but of which can be placed at one place and it cannot be moved from one place to the other place it is constant which cannot move from one place to the other place and internally fire multi tube boiler see internally fired means uh, the firing is going to be done inside the boiler itself and the hot gases are going to pass inside uh, the flue tubes and around that flue tubes water is going to be flowed and it is uh, a natural circulation boiler it is happens naturally and we are not uh, using any pumps here for pumping or for feeding it is uh, happening naturally by using of hot gases it is a medium pressure boiler this is what some of the characteristics which we can study about this langshire boiler here see coming to here we are having some specifications uh, of this langshire boiler see uh, shell diameter should be 2 to 3 meters and the length of the shell should be 7 to 9 meters and the maximum work pressure should be 16 bar the pressure should be maintained at 16 bar the steam capacity should be 9000 kg per hour and the efficiency is 50 to 70% for the langshire boiler here see we are having some applications uh, of this langshire boiler it is commonly used in sugar mills textile industries where power generation as well as process heating is required see here where heating is required in small text in small industries we are going to be used this langshire boilers very very much means nothing but of in sugar mills textile industries as well as in different uh, ways we are going to use uh, this langshire boiler see the construction about the construction of this langshire boiler it consists of a cylindrical shell and two fire tubes as i have shown you in the previous diagram itself and now we can observe here also that it is a cylindrical shell see in the first diagram i have shown you that it is a cylindrical shell we can observe here 
it is a cylindrical shell and two fire tubes we are having two fire tubes in that cylindrical shell the cylindrical shell is placed over the brick structure we can observe from the first diagram that uh, this cylindrical shell has been placed on the brick structure this is the brick structure upon the brick structure this cylindrical shell has been placed see here the boiler have three passages for flow of the flue gases this is the first passage second passage and uh, it enters into the second flue see second uh, fire tube and uh, one of the flue passes from inside of the boiler and second from below and third from the side of the boiler shell we are we are observing the lang shell boiler in three views front view side view and top view see the passage of the flow also is said to be flowing from three ways that the first it passes inside of the boiler second from below of the boiler and third from the side of the boiler shell these three passes are formed by brickwork one bottom flue and two side flues see this is one bottom flue and uh, these are the two side flues which we can observe in the construction see here these three passes are formed by brickwork one bottom from and two sides the grates are provided at the front and inside of two main fire tubes see here we are having grates at the front end and inside of the fire tubes which we can observe here in the first diagram that uh, here we are having fire boxes here in the fire tube we are having the fire boxes here and this is the grate and uh, here for two fire tubes we are having different grates here we can observe this is the front view um, this is the side view from the side view we can observe these two and coming to here this is the side view at the side view we are going to be observed here we are going to observe the grate here at the fire box see here the grates are provided at the front end and inside of two main fire tubes see fire bridge is provided at the end of the grate to prevent coal and ash particles entering into the interior of furnace tubes see we are having fire bridge this is the fire bridge fire bridge is there which we can observe here here we are having some fire bridge at the end of this is provided at the end of the grate to prevent coal and ash particles entering into the interior of the furnace tubes super heater is also provided here this is the super heater is provided at the end of the main flue this is the main flue at the end of the main flue in the passage of flue gases an economizer is at the end of the side flue before exhausting the gases to the chimney dampers are placed at the end of the side flues to control the flow of gases here yeah. this is what about uh, the construction of the langshire boiler and uh, coming to the working principle see here the coal is introduced to the grate through fire holes by using of the fire door or fire holes we are going to feed coals upon to the grate here the combustion of coal takes place in presence of air which is regulated by damper by using of this uh, by regulating of the damper the air is going to be entered see here upon the grate the combustion will produce here when we are going to feed the coal here upon the grate the combustion has been takes place and uh, it is going to produce the hot gases upon the grate see path of flue gases the hot gases from the grate passes up to back end of the tubes see here
when the combustion has been takes place the hot gases are going to be are going to pass up to the back end of the tubes see here this is the back end of the tube and then in the downward direction see here it enters into the downward direction means from the main flow to the bottom flow they move by bottom flow to the front of the boiler see here it moves from bottom flow to the front of the boiler where they are divided into two streams see here you, you can observe here we are having two streams and pass into the side flow and again it has it is going to be passed into the side flow from bottom flow to side flow this is the side flow which we can observe here they move along two side flues and enters into the chimney see after entering into the two sides it is going to be entered into the chimney and then discharges to the atmosphere here due to this flue gas path the water in the shell is heated see here the water the dotted lines which we are showing here the dotted lines which we are showing here see the water in the shell is heated from bottom by the bottom flue from side by the side flue and from center of the fire tubes see here when the hot gases are going to pass due to convection process the heat is going to be absorbed by the water and the steam is going to be generated here at the top of the shell and uh, we are going to convert uh, if we want uh, this steam to be superheated means it is going to pass uh, into the superheated tubes here this is what uh, about the working principle of a langshire boiler which we can observe and we are having some of the advantages of the langshire boiler that due to three phase or passes of flue gases the heating surface area per unit volume of boiler is large the fluctuations in load can be easily met by this boiler due to large reservoir easy operation and low maintenance costs easy to clean and inspect see by using of economizer and superheater maximum heat of flue gases is utilized so efficiency of the boiler can be increased see here as we are using here the economizer and superheater we are going to increase uh, the boiler efficiency here and we can uh, um as it is a uh, more vast area is there we can clean easily and we can inspect and to maintain this uh, boiler it is uh, very advantageous and coming to the disadvantages we are having some disadvantage that maximum working pressure is limited to 16 bars means the pressure due to pressure we are having some one disadvantage due to brickwork more floor area is required see here we are using here for discharging or for uh, diluting of the hot gases we are using some brickwork here see and uh, response of pressure build up is less the furnace is inside the tubes therefore the great area is restricted this is what the disadvantages some of the disadvantages in the langshire boiler this is what about the langshire boiler which we are studying about the construction the working principle and the advantages and disadvantages of a langshire boiler and coming to the next boiler the next boiler which we are studying is about the locomotive boiler see here the locomotive boiler it is a horizontal multi tubular internally fired <coughs> natural circulation boiler see the locomotive boiler is in a horizontal shape multi tubular means we are having more number of tubes inside the boiler internally fired means firing has been takes place inside the boiler itself and natural circulation boiler naturally without using any external source in the locomotive boiler is going to be work it is a fire tube boiler see here it is a fire tube boiler 
and some of the components which we are using in this locomotive boiler is nothing but of boiler shell with a steam dome and a furnace firebox and grate combustion chamber and flue pipes smoke box and chimney boiler boiler mountings and accessories these are some of the components which we are using in the locomotive boiler here we can observe here the locomotive boiler diagram see here what happens here this is the storm dome steam dome which we are going to collect the steam here under the dome and uh, this is the regulator steam regulator which we can regulate the steam and this is the stop valve and uh, this is the smoke box which we are using here in the locomotive and this is the exhaust steam pipe and this is the chimney which we are using here and these are the long horizontal fire tube and this is what uh, the shell horizontal shell and uh, the air is passing upon to the grate here this is what the grate here and this is the fire door see here from the fire door the coal is going to fed upon to the grate here upon to the grate and uh, the combustion has been takes place here after the combustion has been takes place upon the grate see here from here the air is passing upon to the grate uh, for getting combustion very quickly and for doing for complete combustion the air which we are using here and uh, the combustion takes place here after the combustion has been done what are the hot gases produced here is going to pass into these fire tubes inside the fire tubes see here inside the fire tube the, these hot gases which has been formed entered into the fire tubes see here when the hot gases are going to be entered into the fire tubes around the fire tubes the water is going to be circulated and uh, the heat is going to be due to convection process convection process the heat is going to be transferred to the steam and is going to be entered uh, see here due to the convection process uh, the water which is circulating around these fire tubes are going to be converted into steam and the steam is uh, takes under the steam dome and which we are going to collect the steam here and the gases uh, are exposed to the atmosphere uh, by using of this chimney it is exposed the flue gas is exposed to the atmosphere here we are having the superheater header means when we are going to convert the steam into superheated steam the steam is going to be entered into the superheater header and it flows into the this uh, superheater tubes and uh, the steam at last is going to get out uh, by a superheater heated steam and uh, the exhaust when it is going to be entered into the tube some of the steam has been exhausted and uh, the these uh, we, we are going to collect the steam here this is what about the exhaust steam pipe and uh, this is what the smoke box after collecting uh, the flue gases uh, it enters into the smoke box and by using of this smoke box it enters uh, to the chimney by using of the chimney it enters into the atmosphere this is what uh, about uh, the locomotive boiler which we can study see this is the construction or main parts which we can some observe of a locomotive boiler see here what i have said you that uh, from the fire hole we are going to feed coal upon to the grate 
and here upon the great combustion has been take place and from the fire hole itself we are feeding the secondary air here and uh, we are going to feed the primary air and this is the fire brick arch this is the fire box which uh, the combustion takes place here after uh, doing combustion process what are the hot gases generated or developed here is going to be entered into the this tubes into the fire tubes and uh, the steam what are um, around uh, these hot gases hot uh, fire tubes now what are the hot gases inside uh, the fire tubes around uh, the fire tubes the water is going to be circulated and uh, due to convection process what is the heat absorbed by the fire tubes by using of that the water is going to be converted into the steam see here by using of the superheater we are going to convert uh, the steam into superheater here under the dome the steam has been collected and these are some of the accessories or the some of the mountings which we are using for working principle of these uh, locomotive boiler this is what what are the mountings which we are using here it is nothing but of fire hole here we are using fire hole sir for feeding the coal upon to the grate this is the fire box where combustion has been uh, their combustion is going to be takes place and uh, upon the grate uh, where soil fuel is kept and burnt here here fire brick arch it is a brick arch placed inclined over the grate it prevents the entry of the ash dust and burnt fuel particles into the fire tubes for controlling of uh, entering the ashes and dust particles up into the fire tubes this fire brick arch is created there and uh, boiler tubes are there boiler tubes uh, are there see here there are fire tubes through which the hot flow gases passes and exchange the heat with the surrounding water see smoke box according to the name it is a box in which the smoke of the burnt fuel after passing through the fire tube get collected from there it is exhausted in the environment by using of the chimney and blast pipe it is a pipe provided above the steam engine the exhaust steam passes through this blast pipe an artificial draft that pushes the smoke out for uh, by using of this blast pipe the smoke uh, which has been formed uh, it will be entered into the atmosphere by using of the chimney this is a steam pipe it is a pipe through which the steam passes which has two steam pipes so we already have i have shown you there the steam pipe and where we are going to collect the steam and uh, where the super heater is placed and how we are going to super heat the steam here super heater is nothing but of it super heats the steam to the desired temperature before entering into the cylinder of the steam engine means uh, for desired temperature we are going to send the steam to the super heater super heater element pipe these are the pipe super heater through which the steam travels and gets super heated the dome dome we have observed in the figure that it is present at the top and contains the regulator for regulating the steam produced to the steam pipe when where we are going to collect the steam is nothing but of the dome and by using of the regulator valve steam that is a valve that regulate the steam through the main steam pipe for super heating purpose safety valve we all knows we this safety valve is used for controlling of the steam maintain the safe working steam present in the locomotive boiler and for controlling the sedimentations formed are for ent not entering into the boiler super heater header it is the head of the super heater which accepts the steam from the steam pipe chimney means what are the gases uh, exhausting into the atmosphere is collected through chimney and it uh, sends to the atmosphere this is what uh, what i have explained to you about the working of locomotive boiler in the locomotive boiler first the solid fuel is inserted in the grate and is see upon the grate we are going to feed some coal from the fire tube 
see from the fire coal the burning of the fuel starts and creates hot flue gases and uh, it uh, after burning it enters into the fire tubes and uh, due to convection process the hot gases uh, the water is going to be converted into steam this is what about the working principle which we have explained in the diagram itself see some of the advantages of locomotive boiler are it is a portable and can be easily transported it is capable of meeting sudden and fluctuation demands of steam it is a cost effective boiler and it has high steam generation rate it is compact in size and its operation is easy sir some of the disadvantages it faces the problems of uh, corrosion and unable to work uh, under heavy load conditions because of overheating problem some of its water spaces are difficult to clean this is what uh, about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of a locomotive boiler and uh, what are the applications of this locomotive boilers means locomotive boilers uh, are mostly wide you mostly used in railways and marines uh, railways and marines see these locomotive boilers are going to be used in railways and marines the efficiency of this boiler is very less compared with the other boilers it cannot work in heavy load conditions because this leads to the overheating of the boiler and finally gets damaged as we are getting overheated overheating and uh, the boiler is going to be get damaged due to overheating so this boiler cannot work uh, under heavy load conditions these are they are also used in track tractation engines steam rollers portable steam engines and some other steam road some other steam road vehicles this is what uh, about uh, the locomotive boiler which we have studied about the construction and working principles and mountings and accessories of the locomotive boiler in this video we have completed the two boilers of langshire boiler as well as uh, locomotive boilers working principles and constructions and mounting and accessories this is what uh, about uh, the langshire and locomotive boilers if and in the next classes we are going to look after different uh, boilers thank you for your attention and for patience in listening this is thank you if you are having any doubts please call me or mail to my mail id thank you